Today I'm going to talk about focus, how focus works at the core, uh, which I haven't found many good explanations of, so I thought I would make one myself. And also uh, how a distance scale on a lens works, I mean these small numbers that might be a bit confusing, and also what hyperfocal distance is. So when I first started thinking about focus and how to best explain it, uh, I started thinking how do I visualize focus myself? And then I actually uh, started thinking about Photoshop and a certain tool in Photoshop called the Gradient tool. Uh, with that tool you can create something like this, a gradient uh, that is the strongest in the middle and then it gradually, gradually uh, becomes less strong uh, towards the sides like this. And this is actually a great analogy for focus, because uh, when you focus on something, for example in this case uh, a person, uh, the area that is in absolutely perfect focus is always like infinitely thin. And uh, then of course you can make the whole person look in focus, because a little bit uh, outside the middle it is still sharp enough so that you can't really notice a difference between perfect sharpness and like 99.9% .9 sharpness. Uh, so, anyways, in this example I have tried to illustrate uh, by having a camera here which represents like the sensor or the camera. And then this ant represents um, something that's really close to the lens, uh, something that we focus really closely on. And the person here represents something like not super close but not far away either, uh, our subject typically. And these mountains here, they represent infinite focus, like something that's at the horizon or even beyond. Another great uh, thing with this analogy with the gradient in Photoshop is that I can resize it like this. Uh, and this is actually how I view the focal plane, and I haven't like studied the theory about this, this is just my experience from taking tens of thousands of photos, this is how I view focus in my own brain, and I think it's, it, it should be a pretty good model to start learning about how focus works. Uh, so if you look here, uh, when we focus really really closely, as for example in macro photography, the plane of focus is actually a lot thinner than if we focus far away. And this is why uh, it is so easy to get the background uh, blurry and out of focus when you focus really closely. This is why it's so popular to, for example, take a photo of a cup of coffee or something, because then you focus really closely and it's easy to get a nice bokeh, a nice blurry background. And uh, if you want to take a photo of a person, uh, a bit further away, uh, you can still get a blurry background because as you see here this area kind of is in focus uh, but still the horizon is still not in focus. But then you need to make sure that the background is quite far away so that it, if you want it to be blurry and out of focus. And this is also, I think when you're starting out in photography, this is something you're it's not really intuitive to grasp this and actually I don't, didn't really grasp this until I started using manual lenses where you set the focus yourself then I started slowly to understand how this actually works. The thing with the focal plane becoming wider the further away you focus this is also an explanation of for example why it's hard to take a photo of a tree uh, which is usually quite far away uh, and have the background blurry that is like almost impossible right? Uh, and I didn't really understand this, like, why can I take a photo of a cup of coffee and have the background blurry, but not of a tree? That is, like, unintuitive. Uh, but once you understand that the focal plane becomes wider, the further away you focus, you start understanding how it can be like that. This is also great to understand uh, when we start looking at um, this distance scale on a lens, uh, because uh, actually what I've just told you is reflected there but in numbers. So what about aperture? We know that aperture um, affects uh, how, how deep the, the, the field of focus is and it's quite simple. For any given distance that we focus on, for example I focus on the person here, uh, then uh, if say this aperture is f2.8 let's say, uh, if I change the aperture to be smaller, the 
area that is in focus will always become larger. So for example, this might be f5.6 and this could be f8. Or wait, uh, I cannot really extend this beyond the camera. It always goes like from the focus from the sensor and forward like this. So this is the explanation why it's so hard to uh, take a photo of something that is far away and get the background blurry uh, because then usually you, you tend to get uh, infinity in focus as well. So what about hyperfocal distance? What is that? How can, it, how can we explain it? Well in words I guess the definition is uh, the hyperfocal distance is um, the, the focus Focusing distance which maximizes the amount of uh, things you have in focus in your frame. Uh, but to explain it using my drawings here, um, first let's begin by putting the, the focus on infinity. I'm just dragging it out here. Okay, does, the middle doesn't quite reach the mountains, but yeah, say that this is infinity. What, what has happened here is that, okay, infinity is sharp and the person is kind of sharp and quite a lot of in the frame is, is sharp here, we're in focus. But we're actually uh, throwing away half the focal plane, like everything on the left side here uh, is unused focal plane. <laughs> uh, so uh, if we were to use that, um, we need to uh, first of all come up with a definition of what is uh, in focus and what is not. I mean this is a, a gradual scale and uh, it's a matter of definition what is sharp and what is unsharp. I mean somewhere here we could draw a line like a certain uh, level of sharpness we could say okay everything uh, towards the middle point is uh, actually in focus. So let's, let's draw uh, a line here. Let's say that everything uh, to the right here, like from the line to the middle, is in focus and everything on this side is not. And then we of course need to draw a similar line on the other side. So let's put it there. And uh, okay, now we have uh, somehow come up with a definition of everything between these two lines is in focus and everything outside them is not. Uh, now we can start talking about hyperfocal distance because what we do here is actually we put uh, the further line on infinity that way we, we can be sure that uh, everything until infinity is sharp enough or according to our definition that we just created it is in focus and then we actually utilize as much as possible of the focal plane and the point here that we're focusing on now, that we put this line on infinity, uh, this point, this distance from the camera, that is the hyperfocal distance. That is the definition. I, I hope that definition made it a bit clearer than the text definition. This is at least how, how I view it. And this is of course uh, very good to know and very handy to use uh, if you're doing landscape photography where you have objects that are both close to the camera, like a rock, and far away from the camera, like a mountain, and you want to keep as much as possible in as great focus as possible, or as sharp as possible, then uh, knowing about and being able to apply hyperfocal distance is very good. <laughs> so, let's look at the lens and the distance scale. Uh, on the bottom here I set the aperture, so now I've set it to 8. And what does that mean for the distance scale, all these numbers? First of all, uh, usually there are numbers both for feet and meters. And in this case the green ones are feet and the white ones are meters. And below you see uh, 16, 8, 4 and so on. And these are different apertures and how much is in focus for each aperture. So if we now are at 16. Uh, we'd look what is between the two 16s on this scale. And then we see that between 2 meters and 1.2 meters we have everything in focus for the aperture 16. Now I set the focus to infinity and then we can see that everything from 5 meters to infinity is in focus. According to the definition of focus that this lens manufacturer used and in many cases that is uh, 
like not up to the standards with today's high resolution cameras but anyways now I'll set it here to f11 and then if we look at that marking we can see that the focus is somewhere between 5 and 10 meters to infinity so how do we set the hyperfocal distance well simple now at f11 I simply set the infinity symbol to f11 on the scale here and now we have the hyperfocal distance everything from around 4 meters or 3.8 meters or something to infinity should be in focus right now according to this distance scale it can also be interesting to compare different lenses this is a 20 mm lens as opposed to the last one which was 55 mm and as you can see here uh, a lot more is in focus because of the wider focal length uh, this particular lens does not have an aperture control on the lens, uh, you set it in the camera. But here for example I'm focused on infinity. And then for example for f11, everything from 4 feet to infinity should be in focus. Or from like 1.2 meters to infinity. And then if we would have had the aperture at 8, then everything from around 1.5 meters to infinity would be in focus. So it's quite simple when you know how to read the scale. So if you're out shooting landscape, I guess the question is, should you set the focus at infinity or should you try to do hyperfocal distance? And I guess it depends. In a scene like this, where you have the stroller very close to the camera and then you also have stuff at infinity, I think hyperfocal distance might be the best option. Now I'm setting it here. I'm setting the infinity to f11 that I'm using as aperture and the stroller is not super sharp but pretty sharp and infinity is also acceptably sharp I would say you have a quite good balance then if you retake the same picture uh, everything the same except that you focus on infinity let's see what happens uh, the stroller becomes a lot more blurry but still like almost sharp I guess but infinity becomes perfectly sharp uh, if in this scene I would not have had a stroller in the foreground I think I would have gotten better results if I just put the focus at infinity because then like most of the things in frame are far away enough to have them very sharp when I focus at infinity so I guess it depends a bit on what scene you're having and also it depends a bit on the lens the wider the focal length or shorter the focal length um, the uh, more it makes sense to focus at infinity because things will be sharp even very close to your camera even at infinity focus that's it for this little video i hope you learned something useful please like it if you did like it and please subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and see you in a few days again